This is the Internal Assessment Examiner's Report for November 2020. Let's unpack this and give some help to the kids out there that are struggling and teachers. What was really good, the IB have praised uh, everybody for the uh, quality of the submissions given the context in which they were made. Some schools have been closed, some schools have been half opened, some kids' experiments failed and then they had to make something up on the other side with databases and shackle something together. But they said there were some huge positives within the uh, cohort for November 2020. They said there was plenty of the usual effects of temperature on vitamin C, lots of rates on hydrogen peroxide. Uh, kinetics continues to be a very rich area for primary data internal assessment. But there were some lovely fresh approaches, which I'm sat watching these pop up on the screen thinking, I wish I'd done that. That would be awesome. Look at that, the ascorbic acid inhibition on chemiluminescence of luminol. Beautiful. Effect of temperature on plus of L-cysteine and effect of solvent structure on distribution coefficient of ammonia. I would love to mark that. That would, just, that would make my day. So the two key words that I took out from there were fortitude and imagination. So again, the, the, the majority of the sample were really good and in line with previous sessions which the moderators had seen. But what would be better if this is what we want to see? There was very little molecular modelling, but this is a clear avenue for exploration for internal assessments. Many of you, uh, viewers, thank you for viewing, will uh, have seen my recent videos on WebMO, as my kids are calling it, or WebMO for molecular modelling, which I think is a massively powerful uh, root channel to explore for internal assessment success. Thanks to John Chewy again for uh, starting me on the uh, path for exploration on that one. Databases, no surprises. Lots of databases were submitted, but many were misunderstood by the authors. So if you're looking at NIST, NIST is a compilation of dozens, if not more, of different databases to come up with the final number, whether that's enthalpy or uh, entropy or whatever it happens to be. It's from lots of different sites all together in one. You need to show an awareness of that if you're only using the one database. Because, to be honest, moderators were not totally au fait with what a good database looks like. And there are is there is a paucity. There are very few database examples out there for people to use. Um, on the plus side, it means the ones that I've shared with the community hopefully have been useful and well received. And the number of hits I've got on the uh, pandemic edition video is, I think it's over 11,000 now. Um, but that just shows there's a, there's a big chasm in the provision from the IB. And I'm sorry, IB, you could have done a better job on that. Um, there must be data from more data from a secondary source than from a primary. So I've said in my previous videos, it's not enough to just have the five data points and triplicates. You've got to make it feel like the 10 hours. And that's actually mentioned by the IB that um, the 10 hour feel was missing from many of the uh, IAs submitted. So expand the DV, make, I don't know, 20, 30 different data points, have a couple of DVs as long as they're related. Be careful on two independent variables, be careful on two IVs, because if they're not interlinked or related, you're not going to score well if you explore that path. Some students, some schools, use an interactive periodic table. That's not acceptable as just the only source of, of data. It's only one data point that's not acceptable. Um, again, the feel of 10 hours, it's got to feel like 10 hours. Your moderators, each moderator gets around about 100. Some might get a bit less, some might get a lot more. Around about 100 IAs. It, it becomes immediately apparent as you're moderating uh, which ones have uh, reached the top bands and which ones are in the middle, which is the majority, the threes and fours out of sixes, and the ones out of two on personal engagement, and the ones that are two out of two, and the ones that are five or six out of six on the, the big hitters, the exploration, the analysis, and the evaluation. There was a general comment that home-based experiments, um, I did dissuade, hopefully, many people from doing these. I just didn't like it at all. There's no, it's very difficult to get IB level chemistry in a home-based environment. And I keep banging on about this. If kids, students are being allowed to put in reference material from GCSE bite size, which I see far too often, that clearly is not at a level that we're expecting. This is IB level chemistry. If it's in the IB level chemistry textbooks and on the uh, websites, the ibchem.com, and it's on Richard Thornley, and it's, it's on MSJ Chem, and it's on Andrew Weng, great, use it. If it's not, raise it. 
they have you raised a concern that there was some flammable liquids, some volatiles, some alcohols being burnt at home. I would be concerned too. I wouldn't let my kids do that. Personal engagement. Most kids thought scored one out of two. There were less scripts where they were relying on since I was a little child. I've always fa been fascinated by the rate of electrolysis. Clearly you haven't. Um, how do you get two marks? Reflect on the methodology during design and data collection. Have a little reflection statement. This is the IB. They love their reflective statements. Put them in the IA. Okay. Record how practical challenges were overcome. I've made this point in at least two of my videos previously. It is science. It is chemistry. We know you're going to hit an impasse. You're going to hit a, a brick wall. But what did you do in response to that brick wall? Maybe the temperatures you chose were too low or too high. You had to narrow the range. So don't just include the range that you found worked. Talk about the, talk about the range that didn't work and then how you came to the conclusion that the range you are using is valid to test your research question. And extend data collection to answer the research question. Okay, so these things were mentioned for November 20. Exploration, um, it's a general comment. Exploration, just as a reminder, uh, you should have a very focused research question. Unfocused research questions are still far too predominant. The method testing the research question is quite a skill to, to learn both for the student and perhaps for, for teachers and moderators as well. If you're investigating the effect of temperature on rates, which is a common one, a common fault that I find is the student fails to recognize whether it's an exothermic or an endothermic reaction, which is gonna to contribute to the temperature, or they don't measure the temperature of the actual uh, reaction mixture. They measure the temperature of the water bath in which it is sat or they rely on the um, air conditioning unit or the heating unit, depending on where you are in the world, to maintain the temperature without recording the temperature. I've said this before, have a controlled variable data table as well as an independent and dependent variable data table to prove that you've controlled the variables. Okay, background needs to be relevant. It's too frequent that uh, we see a random maxwell Boltzmann distribution or a random enthalpy diagram, or the wrong enthalpy diagram, or the mixed up, and that sort of just bad flawed chemistry is going to snoop your whole IA and put your moderator in a pretty bad mood. Research questions with two unlinked in independent variables, not well received. Um, I stick with one IV, maybe expand the DV as much as possible, the dependent variable, maybe extend to have more than one dependent variable, uh, but just keep the IV to one. Research questions that said how we're going to establish the efficiency of this or the success of this or vague qualitative words will not lead to a good IA. Okay, you need to have quantification from the research question. Weak backgrounds that have just been mentioned or copied from the textbook. Lots of chunks of copied text. It's not a bad thing. We all know that what happens with the effect of catalyst on rate of reaction from an enthalpy diagram and Maxwell Boltzmann point of view. Um, but do we, do we need another full page of this when you could have put something beyond uh, what you actually knew to increase your exploration mark and probably your personal engagement as well? So big chunks of text, to avoid that. I already mentioned the use of AC to measure to control the temperature. It doesn't. Uh, students making solutions that are going to be used in calculations using an Erlenmeyer flask or a squat beaker rather than a volumetric flask. There's far too much of that. And universal indicator is never, ever appropriate for IB chemistry. Just don't use it. If you're just using one simulation or taking one trial from one database, that is not sufficient for a chemistry IA. There are a number of ways you can augment the data. Certainly there's lots of databases out there. There's been a 64 simulations and databases uh, document shared previously. That's under one of my videos. Um, another problem was students just copying cleeps or the manufacturer's safety data sheets um, and saying that it's corrosive or harmful or irritant or toxic, whatever it happens to be, but not saying how they're going to control that. Um, I had one recently where a student said they did multiple trials to establish the parameters of the experiment, which is great because they're controlling their experiment. What it didn't control very well, because they used large volumes, was the ethical and environmental because they threw it all down the sink. There were liters and liters of acid when they could have done it in very small quantities. So this, this dose of common sense, I think, is a, a good overarching theme for students and teachers to have. 
There's no need for safety, ethical or envir environmental if you're using a database. Uh, that's been said from the presentation on my IB and support material that you can find on there. Okay, moving on to analysis. Uh, if you're only plotting raw data, uh, too many times to see just time plotted or just temperature plotted, you're only going to get one or two. It doesn't matter how beautifully you've done your uncertainties, it doesn't matter how beautiful your graph is. If it's raw data, two is the maximum mark you're going to get. Very few recorded the control variable data. This is, uh, I've said this two or three times already in this video, video. I've seen it in two different videos previously. Have a table recording the control variable data. Titrations, do the start and the end, not just the total. If you just put the total, we don't know how valid that or accurate, what's the veracity, I like that word, the veracity of that data. So therefore, any subsequent calculations, we can't give much credit for because we don't know the actual data that's been used for it. Okay. So include the raw data, beautifully presented in a table, IV left-hand side, DV across the top, uncertainties, consistent decimal places. We all know this. Trends are often incorrect, incorrectly identified, linear, exponential, or often mixed up. Exponential, look it up, you should know what it looks like. Outliers and anomalies are plenty. You see them all over the place. They're actually rare, rarely identified in either a table or on a graph. But if you do that, you're already in the top middle to the bottom top bands, if that makes sense, the fours and fives, rather than the twos and threes. You are reflecting on your data. Uncertainties, you cannot add absolute uncertainties. If one's in milliliters, one's in cents, uh, seconds, one's in uh, I don't know, degrees C, you can't just add them together. That does not work. Check my uncertainty video in the internal assessment playlist. And standard deviation. This is the second time now, maybe third time, that the IB have said stop using standard deviation. It's not appropriate for low sets of data. If you don't like it, don't speak to me, speak to the IB. For secondary data, students must source comparative data to get your uncertainty. At the very minimum, take the last decimal place, probably two decimal places, 0 0.01, divide it by the value, times it by 100, you've got percent uncertainty. The mark, again, is for considering the uncertainty, not how to do it. Evaluation, same as every other session, the least likely to score well. <laughs> Why is that? because it requires quite deep reflective thinking. It requires students to look at their method, their choice of independent variable. Was it a good choice that I chose this range? Was it a good choice that I chose that? Did I actually find anything? Within the range of uncertainties, was there actually a trend? And that's a major one for me, and it's mentioned in the report, that uncertainties, big error bars, and all the data is within all the error bars, there's no trend whatsoever. Even though the actual data looks like it's a linear relationship, look at the uncertainty as well. And that's the, the reflection that we want to see in the evaluation. Many conclusions did not reflect the actual data when you consider the uncertainty. I've just been mentioning that. Scientific context is quite weak. We don't, we're not after, it'd be great to see academic journals and uh, the, U, the MIT University did this and found this. Fantastic, include it, brilliant. But just IB level chemistry is expected. Okay, frequency of successful collisions, GCSE. Attempt a literature value. If you can't find one, just try and augment it in some way, shape or form. Or even state, I've looked and checked 10 different websites where I expected to find a literature value and I couldn't find it. Okay, sometimes it's going to be impossible to find it, I get that. But most times, you're going to be studying something which is not inventing the wheel. You are on the same wheel that has been turned many times before. There should be some semblance of a literature value out there. Errors must mostly procedural. So I spilt something or something evaporated or there's parallax error. Okay, that's, okay, that's low marks. That's ones and twos out of evaluation. We want to see methodological reflection. There it is again reflective thinking. What was the choice of IV? Was it a good independent variable to choose? Did the reagents behave in an unexpected manner? Look at the outliers. Outliers again, there's a rich source for the top bands. And I'd always have a table. Andrew Wang, what's the weakness? What's the improvement? How would I achieve it? Job done. Middle to top bands already. The extensions overall come much less uh, vernacular, not like more repeats. Choose a different temperature, do 30 degrees, I'll do 20 degrees C. 
but extensions including more uh, sophisticated instrumental techniques or uh, larger glassware to reduce the uncertainty, all these things <laughs> is all about um, the structure of the report, the accuracy of the chemistry, don't include flawed chemistry, it's just embarrassing for, for you and for your school. Uh, check the veracity of your chemistry. Um, we need to see IUPAC new, um, nomenclature, we need to see SI units, we need to see consistent decimal places, we need to see the uncertainties propagated throughout. So what are the common weaknesses? Missing exemplar calculations. Don't just put the, the concentration with 0.12 moles per decimeter cube plus or minus 0.01 moles per decimeter cube. We want to see the grams that went into it. We want to see the volume that went into it. We want you to see the absolute, the percentage uncertainty propagated and added to make your full percentage uncertainty at the end. Again, check my uncertainties video. 12 pages is the limit, party people. 12 pages is the limit. A cheeky 13 with the appendix or bibliography, we're not that pedantic, was the word that it used in the report, but please stick to 12, okay? And chucking a load of cheeky, uh, lengthy appendices does not gain you any marks at the back, so, so, so why bother, okay? Um, unfocused research question uh, at the beginning will snooker you for the rest of the internal assessment. So for future teaching, they're suggesting that uh, we should all be using systematic and random errors. When I said this uh, in one of my previous videos, a lot of people emailed me and said, that's unfair, that's nowhere in the syllabus. Okay, check topic 11.1, .1, you'll find it. You must use literature value or compare it with some other accepted theory or calculate it using bond energies or delta G or all these things are related. It's always in kinetics or in energetics or redox. You can find these things, look for them. Improvements should be realistic. No one has a magic wand, we appreciate that. And just drop the title pages, indices and content pages. Nobody cares, stop doing it, okay? Uh, check method, method for missing variables that would invalidate conclusions. I do find on still a, a lot of reports that if they're looking at the effect of X on Y, they forget completely about doing a limiting reactant calculation, which means that they're all they're doing is, 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 is all the finding is something they could have calculated from the limiting reactant excess reagent calculation rather than the uh, focus of what the research question suge suggested. So control of variables and a reflection on the method, reflection on the RQ, would help massively. Calculations, we still find lots of errors in calculations. Um, kids have these weird decimeter cube, CM cube conversion. I don't know where that started, but last session was just what I was going through. Okay, thank you very much indeed for listening. Hope you found that useful. Uh, best of luck in your internal assessment for whichever session you are going for. This is third in the series. It feels like a tradition now. Um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, smash that subscribe button. Thank you very much indeed for listening. Have a great day.